Hi guys and welcome. This is Jen Gata Siciliano, artist, memoir writer, bipolar psychiatric survivor, and your host of Not As Crazy As You Think podcast, the place that offers an alternative perspective on mental illness, highlighting creativity, non-conventional healing, and breaking on through to the other side. If you are ready for a new narrative on the mental realm that celebrates crazy and cool without penalty, then Not As Crazy As You Think is for you. Hello, this is Jen Gata Siciliano, your host of Not As Crazy As You Think podcast. Thank you for joining me once again. If you haven't gotten a chance to listen to last week's episode about CRISPR, please do, because this is the reality of our world right now um, with all the genetic engineering that is going to just be exploding in the future. It's important to know what's going on. And it's easy to shut ourselves off and not want to see the the whole picture. When we see the whole picture, we have more of a chance to enter the discussion and maybe have influence on the outcome. I mentioned that the transhumanist agenda was partly to blame for the oncoming species wars that many people in the field have predicted. What does that mean, species wars? I'll tell you a little bit about these transhumanists who so religiously believe in the human evolution theories that encompass this idea that we are continually evolving, and yet we know that theories in human evolution are changing every day in terms of time frames, timelines. There is countless evidence to it that's published every day, and I can get into that another time. But because things are unpredictable and we are still learning, it is extremely irresponsible to use what we know so far as a jump off to the science of the future and the decisions we are making. And I say that because much of the transhumanist agenda is the incorporation of AI. We know today that there are extreme problems with AI ethics, with AI racism, with AI doing things that we don't understand. And we are moving forward in this complacent way, accepting our future without really having the conversation. Do we want this? The predictions gave humans a lot more credit than the kind of conversations we're having today about it, as if it, it's not going to affect us. Essentially, what we need to fully understand is that transhumanism is a philosophy. And they believe that transitioning into basically cyborgs is the only way to save the human race. This idea that we can grow into machinery, that bi our biology can be meshed with the technology of the future. We are seeing that with the biotech explosion. This is no longer science fiction or potentials or ideas. So we are in the midst of this happening. It's happening extremely fast. And with the singularity being predicted by Ray Kurzweil to hit somewhere in the 2030s, we are moving much faster than he would have in his most optimistic moments have predicted. His 2005 book, The Singularity is Near, When Humans Transcend Biology. I mean, the guy is brilliant. I don't agree with most of what he says. After his father died, he was so distraught that he set out on a mission to achieve the impossible, which is to cheat death. This idea of helping humans live forever is something that if you're a humanist or someone who is spiritual in any way, we have to 
mull this over in our minds. Are we willing to be mortal and take that risk that when we die, there is a continuation of life? We call it the afterlife. Many of us have imaginations that would make room for an afterlife. There must be something beyond this, perhaps in a different dimension with our consciousness intact, because we know through physics, energy is never lost. And there's a whole argument on that as well. This is really about a belief system. So many, many people are jumping onto this transhumanist agenda. There is a United States transhumanist party, and there's a whole handbook on it. And thing is very expensive on Amazon. I'm probably going to acquire it at some point, but it's extensive. And I do have some copies of the material that I am going to be looking at and hopefully sharing a little bit more in detail what the future brings us in a part two at some point. So right now, I just want to focus on the people who were really interested in exploring this in the early stages, and they had direct influence on it. Firstly, let's just mention the technological singularity again. What does that mean? With the invention of artificial superintelligence, this is going to continue to trigger an exponential growth technologically. It's going to result in powerful superintelligence that qualitatively is going to far surpass all human intelligence and bring unfathomable changes to human civilization. And before this happens, the transhumanists wish to merge with the machines. And they expect everybody else to also, or at least accept that this is their fate. Now, having this alongside humans can be difficult. And these are the choices that we cannot make if you're remaining human. Um, you will have to deal with the enhanced human being as they continue to consider putting implants in their brains and in their bodies. And we know that Elon Musk has been working on the Neuralink uh, Corporation since 2016. He's all set. He's done the pig experiments. He's moving forward. And people are very excited about this technology. But one thing leads to another, and it doesn't just allow us to connect our brains to cyberspace so that things could be quicker, so that things, you know, we could literally move things in a computer program with our eyes. And they are working on those brain interface technologies right now. Wearable technology is just the first step of that, and that could clearly move into incorporating that technology inside our bodies. So naturally, one of the ideas is who is going to be able to get enhanced? Naturally, the first people we think about is the privileged, the rich. They'll be able to afford such enhancements. Um, transhumanists would say, well, we have to make these technologies available to everyone, to all. And from that point, when everybody has, I guess, a basic upgrade, others could go further if they'd like. There is a fascinating movie. I had seen it very early on. It's a 2006 documentary on these ideas called Building Gods. The documentary maker is Ken Gums. It's fascinating. And I think that anyone who wants to learn more about this should look at an early conversation about what the implications are if we accept this wholeheartedly with no critical thinking. There is a transhumanist named Kevin Warwick. He's well known in being one of the first self-proclaimed cyborgs. He's performed research in artificial intelligence, biomedical engineering, control systems, robotics, cybernetics, and cyborgs. Best known for his project Cyborg, which is the set of experiments in which he had two computer chip implants in 1998 and 2002 
put in his arm with the goal of becoming a cyborg. He describes a backlash movement of people who resist upgrading themselves to become cyborgs. He says, I think when implants become more accessible as they are becoming bit by bit, so such people as the humanists who want to stay human, the Terrans, maybe as Hugo de Garris would call them, he doesn't see much of a positive future existence for them, saying, Clearly the world is going to be dominated, either by intelligent machines or cyborgs, or a combination. That's where the future's going. So the future for an ordinary, everyday human, I guess there'll be some sort of subspecies, just like we have now, so we'll have humans in the future. There will be other creatures of the species, cyborg, intelligent machines, that are the dominant life forms on Earth. And as a cyborg, if a human came to see me and starts making silly noises, a bit like a cow does, now, if a cow comes to me and says, moo, 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 I'm not going to say, yeah, that's a great idea. I'm going to do what you tell me. So it will be with a human. They'll come in and start making these silly noises that we call speech and human language and so on and unearthly trivial noises. I'm not going to do those silly things. Why should I? This creature is absolutely stupid in comparison to me. This is an issue. These are the thought forms behind the possible immortals of the future. He describes a backlash movement of people who resist upgrades and making themselves cyborgs. He says, I think when implants become more acceptable as they are becoming bit by bit, so such people as the humanists who want to stay human, I can't see them ultimately as having much power because at the end of the day, their intellectual capabilities will be so inferior to cyborgs, those who have implants and upgrades, that the cyborgs will be able to outthink the subspecies that still are human. So this is an issue I have about intelligence. What is intelligence? Mm, these guys in charge have decided what intelligence is, which is pretty related to storage capacity, computational ability, these kinds of very computer-related quantitative types of actions, I don't see intelligence as that at all. I see that as machinery. Humans are so much more than that. Now, there are a few very well-known transhumanists who really got their footing in the academic argument on what these things are. The philosophical implications were discussed by many of the top scientists in that field. And uh, I'll give you an example. Dr. Hugo de Garris, he's a transhumanist pioneer in the field of artificial intelligence. He's a real pip to read. If you get a chance, he's um, written a bunch of essays. One is entitled, Lincoln was a mass murdering dictator. He's one of the main brain muscles behind determining what intelligence is so that he could replicate it. His technique involves evolvable hardware in which he evolves neural network circuits inside of a computer to build artificial brains. Before he retired, Hugo was the director of the China Brain Project at the Institute of Artificial Intelligence at Zymen University where he received a $3 million grant to build an artificial brain for China. But beyond just a brain, this smart white guy's ultimate goal is creating 3D complex Artilex. About the Artilex of the future, humans should not stand in the way of a higher form of evolution. These machines are godlike. It is human destiny to create them. In 2005, Hugo's most important book, The Artelect War, Cosmists versus Terrans, a bitter controversy concerning whether humanity should build godlike, massively intelligent machines. He describes an artelect as a godlike, massively intelligent machine, which could have capacities trillions and trillions of times above humans. 
But while everyone believes this is a purely scientific endeavor, Hugo freely admits that transhumanism is the new religion for atheists, saying they clearly need something to spiritually believe in. This is the problem. I don't want religion in my life dictated to me by a bunch of prima donna white guys from England. I'm sorry. Okay. And we've branched out from that. This is an international movement. I don't mean to poke fingers or stereotype, but I'm not in need of any kind of spiritual connection that they are providing. I have connection to source. I have connection to my intuition, my guides, my higher self. This to me is taking it one step too far. These ideas that we need to put science first because it offsets the power of religion over the centuries. This is placing a religious drive in the hands of people who aren't considering those things for everyone. He says, as humans, they feel the pangs of religious impulse. Such impulses could be satisfied by cosmism, a scientist's religion, due to its awe, its grandeur, its energizing, its vision. In following his religion and its promised heaven through the science of technology, he was well aware of humanity's potential oncoming demise if the transhumanist program should unexpectedly derail. He predicts the species dominance wars in the future affecting billions of people between the cosmists, those who are in favor of building Artilex, and natural human Terrans who opposed it, and genetically enhanced cyborgs. So this is a interspecies war. Hugo knew nanotechnology was the way to go to build brain-like circuits among the robots, and that accidental misuse of nanotechnology could cause gray goo, where the nanobot multiplication rate becomes exponential, producing greater and greater numbers that would eventually strip the earth of all organic matter, leaving only nanobots behind. He first saw the worst of all outcomes in 2005 when his paper was copyrighted, and yet he and his colleagues did not let these existential risks deter them in committing wholeheartedly to their project. But what they are doing is totally illogical, taking the risk of destroying the human race through making the attempt to save the human race. The idea is that they are taking over evolution because the natural evolution is destined to fail us as human beings. We will not rise to the level of beating extinction, even in our lifetimes, if we don't go down this route, in their opinion. In his book, The Art Elect War, he presents a number of arguments in favor of cosmism. There's the scientific religion argument, the human striving argument, the economic momentum argument, the military momentum argument, the need to build Artilex argument. This is the sentiment that's being pushed right now, pretty much across the board through biotechnology. And yet the Terrans would have an opposite approach. Their arguments would include preserving the human species. Uh, there's a fear of differences argument if there should be more cyborgs popping onto the scene. And basically just the disrespect for anything human uh, in our future. Who will be enhanced? Who will benefit from this most? It probably will not be the average person in poor countries. This is clearly a Western development. Um, the most technologically advanced nations will exponentially separate themselves in evolutionary gain over the rest of the world. We already have such inequality, and this will take it to a level that we have never known before. There's also another guy who is highly esteemed transhumanist geneticist Nick Bostrom was also well aware of all the ways in which this post-human society could go terminally wrong 
with unfixable and irreversible threats that can cause our extinction or destroy the potential of Earth originating intelligent life forever. Now, that to me seems like a big risk. I, it, it's extreme. Uh, for anyone to argue with this is silly. The best guys in the field, the ones who are supporting this agenda, they know how it can go. There's no stopping them, though. While faculty of philosophy at Oxford University in 2002, Bostrom published his thesis, Existential Risks, Analyzing Human Extinction Scenarios and Related Hazards. He flippantly predicts the species-dominant wars of our future in which billions of people will be killed, a giga-death result which equates to the amount of people killed in all the major wars over the past two decades. This was published in Journal of Evolution and Technology, Volume 9, Number 1, 2002, if you wanted to take a look. It's, it's actually fascinating. Bostrom is the founder of Oxford University's Future of Humanity Institute and co-founder of the World Transhumanism Association. He said in his thesis, Transhumanism Values, which was first published in Ethical Issues for the 21st Century back in 2003, that a predicament may arise in transhumanism if the mode of being of a post-human being is radically different from that of a human being. Then we may doubt whether a post-human being can be the same person as a human being, even if the post-human being originated from a human being. Nick Bostrom is also one of the founders of Institute for Ethics and Emerging Technologies, or IEET, a nonprofit think tank focusing on the rights for the emerging enhanced, stated as part of its mission on its website, ultimately we want to see the enforcement of international law and human rights agreements, such as Universal Declaration of Human Rights, promising fundamental freedoms, health, welfare, and education for all. We also want to see an extension of international human rights to include rights to bodily autonomy, reproductive choice, and cognitive liberty for all persons. It's a fair gesture to all the sentience of the future, but I am fighting a daily battle of how the so-called mentally ill population, of which they are interested in doing away with, because what future contribution can we possibly make, those of us with defective genetics? We don't even have human rights, according to their science, this genetic, biological, evolutionary science that states that the people of today are only a result of their inferior genes or superior genes. They clearly decided which was which. And those with inferior genes, such as the mentally ill, they have no place in the future, even among the Terrans. Human rights for robots? Not a big fan. Sophia the Robot is now a um, Saudi Arabian citizen. We will be seeing more of that. She created just recently uh, the first uh, AI-generated piece of art. Um, you know, not for anything, but art comes from the heart. So, you know, you could have a generate computer generated in anything. It doesn't mean anything. But this kind of worship that is developing around this fascination with the potential of the future robot. Meanwhile, they've been working on teaching robots manners through experiments at DARPA or Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. They've been trying to teach robots manners since 2017 with failed results. Things have not changed much. We are heading in a very dystopian future. And it's funny because, again, what I saw during our COVID 2020 year was this sense that people are more interested in tuning out to the problem 
and numbing themselves with passive input, whether it be TV programs or movies or and the thing is I embrace that because I want to be part of that artistic influence and yet at the same time because these things aren't being discussed at all and there's very little belief in ourselves that we can change things if we unite we are definitely heading down this direction so I think the most important thing is, as they predicted, this is something that's unavoidable and it will happen. And we need to know what our future is developing into. I think it's very important that we shed light on this for everyone. Like I said, I will have a part two, probably part three, part four as we go further, because there's so much information on this. And I don't know how many people are aware. I know that there's light talk about it. If you do follow the biotech industry at all, you will hear these values every now and then posed as natural considerations for the foundations of how they go about developing this technology for our future. We are merging. We are merging with machines or not. And like I said on the last podcast, and maybe I was a little abrupt, I am staying human. I am staying human. So if anyone else has the same feelings about it, all you bipolars and, you know, have your psychotic breaks when you actually envision the dystopian future, which is most likely the real future, we're visionaries. You know, this is what gets us locked up, and yet we are the ones who can most accurately deliver the real message to our fellow man. The schizophrenics who have one foot in and one foot out, it's hard for them to have each foot in both worlds. They have trouble in this world because of it. They probably are seeing the full picture, and I'm going to venture to say a lot of people who we consider either ill or non-contributing members of society, they may be smarter than everyone thinks. And those who are creating this technology with blinders on, feeling that they're in some way the only ones that can, tr can contribute to the human race of the future, they're taking on a lot. They're taking on a lot of responsibility. And I hope they're ready to make some loud apologies if this should go terribly wrong. So no, it's no longer science fiction. As they develop uh, artificial bio bags, even in 2017, the scientists in embryology were successfully removing lamb fetuses from their mother's wounds and raising them in healthy sheep through through artificial bio bags uh, created by stem cell researchers at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. This happened years ago. So much more technology is advancing at such a quick rate. We will eventually start losing the ability to keep up with it and even know what's going on. Now that CRISPR's on the scene, Genetic bioengineering is absolutely the way of our future, and they're th thrilled to be a part of that effort. Listen, all I'm saying is that everyone should do as they feel fit. Everyone should do as they wish, but there will be consequences, and the consequences we cannot predict. And that is one of the Terran arguments, that this is an argument for unpredictable complexity. We have no idea what's going to happen with evolvable hardware, the AI that becomes something on its own that we couldn't predict. And if we have results that were unpredictable, the results going forward from there are even exponentially unpredictable. The one thing that we could count on up until this point were the laws of nature. We are literally changing the laws of nature by using this technology in such a way that 
every single aspect of life as we know it will be radically changed for the good or for the worse with really no conversation behind it. Most people who are engaged in the conversation right now are the ones pushing it forward. So just be aware of what's going on. And as I say, I try to have these discussions when I can and share what I know. And I'm learning every day. I don't know that much. I know more about the philosophy. Um, and people will say it began in the 1950s with the evolutionary biologist Julian Huxley's book in 1957. This has been around for a while. People have had wonderful imaginations. And I would just remind you that there are many, many dystopian nightmare books out there that anybody could see from very creative minds. You don't have to be a scientist to imagine such things. But if you do know the science and you're willing to go there in your imagination, you might end up on the inside of the hospital like I did seven times. So be aware... I guess I am the voice of the future for the Terrans. Um, I am not going cyborg. So whether you join me or not uh, in that venture, thanks for tuning in again. Thanks for listening to Not As Crazy As You Think. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And remember, mental health is attainable for anyone, especially those labeled with mental illness. Until next time, peace out.